Esos breves de tus pasos se acercan Tú me debes una noche con maldad Yo soy preso de esos besos y tu piel para mí Estoy contigo yeah. Y porque la pasamos genial Es un castigo yeah. Es solo que conmigo Encontraste tu abrigo yeah. Y por ahí encontraste algo más Tú lo sabes No nos desvimos del caso Solo tú y yo mujer Tú eres perfecta, tú eres mi caro Y yo puedo ser tu nena Sé que tú quieres más de eso La que tírame ese hueso Que él no te dio lo que te di Y no solo hablo del sexo Lo que yo te di Baby, te quiero para mí
What's going on? What's going on? What is going on, man? Let's get this going. All right. Huh. Don't know why it's not sharing on com- the computer. Look at where I was standing. But here we are now. To rest the soul. That's crazy. This evening will soon be over, and we'll be back in the roles we play. Always caught in the charades of life, longing for a sweet day. But this can be our
There we go. All right. Shout out to the CIA and all that good old stuff over there, people. One love to the FBI. We're going to get back to where we were before we got out of here on that power outage. So let's get into it. We're going to put it back on the screen. How many of you guys are doing well? If you didn't catch up with where we were last time, I was basically talking about these level up movements. Listen, you can pick this up better than I can explain it by just listening to this clip from earlier this year. Basically, I felt like financially he fell short, but I don't blame him for that. I blame myself for accepting that from him. Um, and so when I woke up, started watching um, women like she and I said, wait a minute, I felt duped, you know? I said, I deserve better, but at the same time, I know that I need to do better myself. Uh -huh. So long story short, um, you know, I asked him to leave, he left, and all of a sudden he's paying my rent. All of a sudden he's taking care of things that he normally would not have taken care of in the past. Um, to the point where he told me that he won't continue to pay rent for a place that he doesn't live in. And long story short, he's coming back tomorrow from flying in from Massachusetts. Okay. So at this point, I feel like I'm definitely ready to continue to level up to the point where I even want to travel internationally. I want to go to continents like Africa. Um, I have some roots there. And I want to see what else is out there. <laughs> oh, okay, so let me get this right. Yeah, yeah. You're, you're married, legally I'm, married. Yes. To a man who's not the father of your children. He is. He is. He is the He's father, the father of, your children. of both of my children. Yep. Okay. So, yeah. how would you end up watching Shira Seven? How would you find her platform? You know what's interesting about that? I feel like when you watch one video, it leads from one video to the next. Well, that's so, how the that's how the platform is supposed to work. But how how'd you find? What were you searching when you found her? I think, oh my gosh, I can't remember, but you know, I know I was watching videos having to do with um, with dating, obviously, but I'm just trying to figure out like what the tag word was, which um, I just know that I was in the video feeds for dating. And then all of a sudden, her video kept coming up and I kept skipping over it, funny enough. And so finally I said, you know what? Let me click on her video. Let me see what she's about. Um, so long story short, as, as far as the background, you know, um, on my husband. So he, he was previously married twice, okay? Um, one, of, one of the marriages, he got married in the U.S. and got a divorce in Haiti. Okay, as so... I was preparing... Well, let me... Hold on. Let me, let me ask, okay. You, 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 you said you felt like you mm -hmm. were duped. When you yeah, watch she was like, oh, okay, but so you're married yeah. to a man and you have his married children and yeah. you feel like you were duped. Why? Yes. Why? You know, I felt like by the time that when he met me, you know, I already had a master's degree. I was working as There's a that teacher. master's degree again. Um, in my standard, I was doing pretty good. So I didn't I didn't um She was doing good because she had a master's there. degree. I was struggling. So it's not but, until I met him. You're talking about money. Money, exactly. So, um, so let me get this right. Yeah. You're already married to this man and you have children. Mm -hmm. But because he's not making what you're making, you felt duped. And the answer is to go travel. No, no, no. Listen, when I say, okay, the reason why I went into the background was because I had applied for his green card. Okay. And Which is fine. Of, he's your husband. husband. But he made a stupid mistake. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. He's your husband. Yeah. I did. I understand that. Okay. I applied for him, but the government said no. Okay. But, but he's your husband. He's not yeah. he's not just a lame. He's your right. husband. So right. how's he duping you? Okay. May need to go into more detail. Well, because here's the thing. I, yeah. I don't particularly have a problem with some of the stuff Shira Seven says, because I'll be yeah. honest, Shira Seven... Uh, couldn't fuck with a dude like me. 
She yes, has to, she has to do what it man that, that that I mean, come on. There's I mean right. she can tell and and I and I believe that if she's married, her husband is perfectly fine with what she says, and they, that's fine with them. But what I'm trying to understand is why a married woman with two children felt duped because her husband doesn't make as much as she does. Can, can I just can, go explain ahead. why? Go can ahead. I'm, so I'm trying to understand. So there were certain situations where I didn't even know where I was going to live. So we lived in a shelter on and off. Okay. I, hold on. You said I didn't know where I was going to live? We didn't know like where my family was going to live. We actually lived in a shelter. Did she talk like off. a married woman? Okay. Um, three so you times. guys went through some hard times. We went through a lot of hard times. And I finally decided to move mm -hmm. to the South, you know, so I could be closer uh, to my dad. Did you move with him? No, no. I, I live by myself. So I'm, I'm oh, in my but home. But you were married at the time? Yes. Still okay. Married. So what about that part of the vow that's in sickness and, and health or richer for poor? I mean... You went through some tough times, so you left. Your, you left and went back to your dad. No, no, I didn't. I didn't even go back to live with my dad. What I did was I just moved to the same state that he lives in. Without your um, husband. No, I moved with him. I moved with him. No, no. I just, so I just, I just want to make clear. You decided yeah. to, you decided to move back closer to home. Was your husband in that move or not? Yes, he was. Okay. He was. Yeah. Okay. My, my question is this, because you, you talk about your husband almost as if he's just a guy. You said, I went through some hard times. We didn't go through some hard times. You decided to move back to be closer to your family. Did that work? It did, because... Okay, so, but, his, but your family is his family too, right? Yes. Okay, so where's the duping? Where I felt duped was there were... You know, when you first meet with that person, you have certain goals, dreams, right? Uh -huh. Promises are made. And right. I felt that at the uh -huh. level that I was at. The level she was at. I felt like I could have done better. Okay, let's just, get right to, let's just get right get right to it. Uh -huh. you basing, you're judging this man solely on, on your money and achievement. So, so what, I'm, what I got to ask you is some straight up questions. Are you still the same size you were when you got married? Or are you bigger? Of course, after having two children. No, 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 no. It's not of course. No, it's not of yeah. course, ma'am. It's not of course. Yeah. Did you gain weight? I gained some weight and then I lost some weight. No, so no. Okay, let me just, I want to be clear because, you know, he married you one way and you, you gained weight, right? See, yeah. and, what I'm, and, and because you're making more than him, I, I don't understand why you felt duped. I mean, did he lie to you? Yes, as far as the immigration... No, 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 no. That's not what I'm talking about. How did he lie to you about his income? Hold on, sorry. Not, not about his income, but more so. Then you can't you know, dupe somebody. Then you cannot, you cannot be duplicitous, i.e. lie, if he did not tell a falsehood. Mm -hmm. This is making you look kind of bad, ma'am. You're talking about your husband, the father of your two children, that he duped you because you decided, because you went to college. And when you went to school, was that during the marriage? No, no. I had already completed all of my education okay. before I met him. Okay. All of her so education. I was already, you know, well into Mommy. my career at that moment. All right. Okay. But did you have student loan debt? Of course. Yes, I do. Okay. And do. is your husband fully Of course employed? she has debt. When I met him, yes. And then after a couple of, I'd say about a year. Mm-hmm. Or two years into the marriage, then, you know, his mother fell sick and he left his job. His um, mother fell sick. So he's not working. Not, not my mother in law. So he's, not, exactly. so his he's not working. Yeah, he wasn't working at, at, you know, after two years. He just kind of. I'm just saying, so I'm just being clear. Is he working today? Right now, yes. Okay. And he was working when you were married? Yes. Okay. And you had student loan debt then too, right? Yes. Did any of his money go to pay any of your student loan debt? No, sir. Okay, so you're telling me that you had a separate account, he had a separate account. He's paid nothing for you over the course of your marriage. Nope, I'm not, didn't put me in a house or anything, didn't buy I me didn't a ask about putting you in the house, I'm saying did you guys have no. separate accounts? We did, and at a certain point we did end up having a joint account. Okay, so in that joint account- Didn't that put me in the house. Went in there, and his money went in there, right? Yes. <sighs> So if you had to make a student loan payment out of that joint account, 
I don't think you can tell me you had an accounting method to split his dollar from your dollar. It just came out of the dollars. Right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So let me get this. So, so, so what you're trying to paint is you're trying to paint this man in a position where he did something that you can't even explain what he did. When it comes right down to it is you think you're better than your husband because you got a piece of paper and you make more money. That's your right to feel that way. But I would tell you this, it is very unattractive to hear coming from a woman who's saying her husband hasn't done anything to her. He hasn't cheated on you. He hasn't lied on you and had no outside kids. He just happens to make less money than you. Hold on. Sorry. Hold on. Hold okay. on. He just <laughs> yeah. makes less. Hold on. He makes yeah, less money ahead. than he makes less money than you because his education is less than yours. But he did not lie about that. Every at every turn you've tried to paint this man into a corner of taking or manipulating from you. So let me just put this out there. Let's say you divorce the guy. I mean, because you went Shira Seven and you went all savage on him, right? Okay. And he's and he put up with that. Let's say you decide to still think you can get out there with two kids. Who gonna date you? Can you can you actually contend with the man uh, like the guys I'm talking about? Will we accept that? Will we accept the one with two kids, college debt, who gained weight? You got a lot of bad stuff to say about that. With any of these yeah, men. Huh? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Hello? so I'm with you. Hold on. Oh. Hello, can you hear me? Did, did you hear the question I asked? Were there any of the men that you feel like you deserve pick you right now? Hmm, that's a good question. I can tell I you no. I can tell no. you no. I can tell you no. I can tell you straight up no right now because you got two kids. I don't have to. Yeah. I'm, I don't have to deal with a school teacher with a with an overinflated sense of ego and two kids. I ain't gonna get one fresh off the truck. No kids, no baggage, no superiority complex. I have a suggestion for you, ma'am. Mm -hmm. Stop watching Shira Seven and start being being uh grateful that you have a husband and it puts you in the less than 30% of black folks. Start being grateful for the fact that you have a man who's the father of both of your children. Start being grateful that you have a man who will put up with your, uh, no offense, man, but your, your rather entitled attitude just because you're a school. What do you do again? Um, so right now I teach English online and I'm a recruiter. You teach what? English. Okay. I teach English online. Yeah. And I'm a recruiter. English okay, teacher. So are you making $100,000 plus? No. Are you making $75,000 plus? All this attitude from an English teacher. No. Are you making $50,000 plus? Nope. When are you making $50,000? Where do you get off with this attitude? The reason yeah. why you got two kids, you got two kids in college mm -hmm. debt, and you ain't making fifty thousand dollars a year. But I did at one point. I don't care, ma'am. Ma'am, understand it doesn't matter. I ask right, right now, because mm -hmm. right now you're older, heavier, and more jaded. And this is what I'm saying. If you were to, if your husband were to come up and say, "You know what? I'm tired of you feeling like you're better than me. Forget it." Mm -hmm. And it were to divorce you. Do you think you could actively on this dating market come in saying, hey, I make less than $50,000 a year with two kids, some college loan debt, and my husband walked away from me. Do you think that would actually sell on this market to a single man with options? This is the harsh truth you kind of need to hear because you were trying to sit down and run out, you were trying to run down this man down at every turn. I, I suggest what you do, man. Is when you get settled, come back, go back and watch this live stream. And I want you to look at some of the things that people, the men and women are saying in the chat. Mm -hmm. um, because I, I honestly, it, it really sound, um, this is outrageous. Okay. And the fact, and, the fa and I'll just, um, and I'll tell you why it's outrageous. Mm -hmm. The fact that you Now she's about to get upset. Now, what? Outrageous. I got a master's. 
Shira and them told me I needed to level up. He ain't even put me in a house. I've had two kids for this guy. Married. You haven't said this man has been a bad man. He lacks character. And I'm wondering why you're watching Shira 7 and thinking that's going to make a healthy marriage. Again, I have no problem with Shira 7 and her content. But it does not lead to a health. Dr. Sierra Seven. With two middle class people. Do, do you not understand that? I understand. The only tough part for me is how do I reconcile living in shelter with a man who could have done more? To avoid that in the first place. Uh, That's you, the only thing that uh, I this, this, how, this is how you reconcile. You yeah. stop trying to be God. The nerve of you. What about what? How about this? How about if people above you start judging you? I mean, let me let's just be real. How old are you? Mm -hmm. uh, what age range? Are you in your thirties? Yeah, I'm thirty-four. Okay. About how tall mm -hmm. are you? Uh, five three. And about how much do you weigh? Uh, two ten. Oh my. You're five foot three and over two hundred ten pounds, mm -hmm. ma'am. If you were to be judged as harshly on the sexual marketplace value as this man who fell down, because you're judging this man, but what you're not saying is when he fell on hard times, he did not leave. You took the vow for better, for poor, for richer, for poor, sickness and health, the good times and bad times, to death do you part. You weren't in that shelter by yourself. He was there with you. Right? Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. You're right. What? Mm -hmm. And you're upset with him. And how long ago was this? How many years ago was this? How many years have we been married? No, how long ago were you in this tough time or bad time? How, how long ago was that? I'd say within a time span of six years of our marriage. So we've moved at least like eight times. Okay. But how long ago were you in the shelter? Oh, just last year. Last I year. left last December, last so, December of last so let, year. So I want you to remember the movie uh, from Will Smith, um, The Pursuit mm -hmm. of Happiness, right? Yeah. Remember that movie? People cheered Will Smith on because he was in a, in a homeless shelter with his son because he was there. Mm -hmm. You had a man that was there. Mm -hmm. And you're upset because you fell on hard times with your legal husband and your children. Mm -hmm. Right. And you want to punish him because he failed or had a hiccup or a problem? You said yourself mm -hmm. that he's working right now. Yeah, right now he is. Okay. And I give him credit for that. No, you don't. You don't, ma'am. You really don't. You started off t running down everything he wasn't. And honestly, he sounds, and I don't mean to be rude, ma'am. I really don't. He sounds like he's almost too good for you the way you talk about him. He, he did this. He didn't do that. He's this, he's that. And I don't mean to be rude, ma'am. I really don't. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. you, 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 you make less than $50,000 a year as an online teacher and a recruiter. You're not a high power corporate executive. You are five foot three, 210 pounds with two children. That does not make you a hot mama on the dating scene. I think you really need a reality check. Thank you, my stylish godfather. You need a reality check. You need a reality check. And when, mm -hmm. honestly, if you were my client, I would tell you to go home and apologize to your husband and beg for his forgiveness. Because that man has been there. Mm -hmm. If you disagree, ma'am, I, I really strongly encourage you to come back to this chat room and just look at mm -hmm. what your female counterparts are saying. And this is what I said far, far too often. Women in general, too, too often, our sisters in particular, feel like they're better than their men because you're making more than him. But you, you knew his situation when you guys got married. He did not dupe you. Let me just say this. If you were driving home this weekend, do you drive? Yes, I do. Okay, God forbid you were involved in a 
serious accident and you were paralyzed from the neck down, quadriplegic or paraplegic, whatever that is, mm -hmm. would you think your husband would be within his rights to just step away from the marriage and say, well, she's not the woman I married. I feel like I deserve better. Should he leave yep. you? Mm -hmm. you? You do you believe that? He should leave you because you're paralyzed. Did you say yes? Yes, he would be within his rights. Okay. He would be. Okay, um, then, then ma'am, then, ma then, ma then, ma then ma I suggest you really don't understand what marriage is. You wanted a business arrangement. You wanted a partnership. That was, that was nothing in your marital vows that you took that gives a man an out for a woman gaining weight in childbirth being par in sickness and in health. Is that not sickness if you're paralyzed from the neck down? Mm -hmm. So how can you honestly sit here and say he would be within his right inside the covenant of that marriage to leave you? See, that's what you're not understanding. These things that you put all this value on, your so-called degree that ain't making you no real money, I made more money waiting tables than you make with your high-fluted degree. Let me check you right there. I made more monies serving shrimp on a weekend than you make with your high powered degree that you had to go spend tens of thousands of dollars to get. So we need to check that shit right there. But if all the things that made by your name, the things that put you, you got your ass up on your shoulders, you would say you were involved in a situation where that didn't matter. <laughs> and you couldn't lob that over your husband would he still, he sounds like the kind of man who would still be there. Ma'am, I suggest he's not the issue. It's likely you. So my, my thing is this, I, I always suggest as nicely as I can, serious psychological counseling for both of us, for, for men and women, black people in particular, because this is not healthy or normal, man. God. And then after you get your self straight you guys sound like you need counseling together as a group practical counseling and then spiritual counseling not either yeah. or and because you are married you have two children are those your children in the background yep I'm they're relying on they're relying on them uh, do you have a son or, or, or do you have a son uh -huh. a both a son and a daughter okay so. i need you to understand something your son mm -hmm. is relying upon his mother to look like his father as the man your daughter is looking at the way you carry on and treat your husband as her imprint for how she talks about man. Fearless, I got news for you. You have two babies. It ain't about you no more, boo. It's about those kids. You're right. I, I know. I agree. Yeah. I know, but you but man, yeah. you're not but you've not spoken like that. When you got on this channel, you wanted to run this man down. And he's still married to you and there. You, you, you moved from one place to be around your family and he, and he went. You didn't say you went to be with his family, you left to be with your family. And I'm gonna go out on a limb here and say, I don't think you probably speak very highly of this man around the kids or even around your family. And he puts up with that. I mean, the nerve of you, all five foot three, 210 pounds of you. And I say that because I don't think you understand that if you were out here in the dating market with two kids at that height and weight, with your debt to income ratio and your earning, uh, no. What do you think about things I just said? Um, I'm taking it with a grain of salt. Okay. And I'm really, I'm really considering everything that you're saying. And, and I can hear that. I can truly hear that. You haven't raised your voice or got angry, so I, I give you all the credit in the world for that because these things are not easy to hear. You know, um, the other thing, too, what you're right about, you know, I think I allowed my family mm -hmm. to get involved, you know, well, to dictate. Yeah, yeah, yeah I can You know, that. well, he's not doing anything for you. You know, why are you sticking around? I mean, mm -hmm. And I listened to that for years. Yeah. <laughs> Until I finally said, you know what? Maybe they're right. So I wasn't at that moment thinking about, okay, 
Absolutely. How is this going to impact, you know, not just our marriage, but our families and everything. So you, you sound like, ma'am, this is why we must leave and cleave. This is why it is so important to get away from our families and not involve them in anything. Because see, the thing is, you guys can have an argument and you'll forgive him and go make, and, and, and go make love. Your family won't. The worst thing any of us can do is involve our families in our personal relationships. But the most important thing is this is the holiday season. You got two babies in the backseat who love you both. That, and he's with you. This man has been there in a homeless shelter with you. Don't you think he'll be on the mountaintop with you too? He obviously See, that part right there is what's often missing in a lot of these level up conversations. A lot of these women focus on what they perceive to be down because these men aren't rich. I mean, a bunch of average women with average careers and average stats wanting royalty. And because you can look at a time where he fell short, you want to punish that man. Instead of sticking by your man like every other group of women does, you don't just keep recycling. See, what we're going to get into is a lot of women said that was just an isolated incident. This really doesn't happen that often. Oh, really? Loves you. Men don't stick around to be honestly abused and treated ill. They don't love a woman. Right. How about give them credit for that? Okay, mm -hmm. he doesn't make what you want him to make. I can hear that. I can hear that. I, you know, I'm the guy that preaches 60 hours a week. I, I, I can hear that. But how about mm -hmm. you, you inspire your husband? Because he loves you, obviously. How about you start worrying about the stuff that really is inconsequential? That's why I made that example about the car wreck. Because, man... It ain't that much money you're talking about. And I, I, I can tell you that I, I date every weekend with women who are younger, no children, in great shape, who would love to have even a whiff of what you have. Mm -hmm. Don't lose that over, over, over nothing. Here's, a, here's an assignment for you, okay? Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is going to sound crazy. I okay. need you to watch episodes of a TV show on you, on you called Kitchen Nightmares. Uh-huh. Watch episodes where families own Let her talk. And then watch where Gordon Chef Ramsay comes in and sees this restaurant being run by a family. And then mm -hmm. there's one with this Greek family. I'm going to go ahead and say this. Let her talk, because there ain't nothing struggle on this channel. This is rarefied air over here. So she may be new to this channel, maybe new to this platform. But ain't nothing struggle about this. And this man by the name of Sam, watch the transformation that happens in these episodes when people stop focusing on their petty disputes and squabbles and start working together and come together as a family, because that's what you have. A husband, wife, and two children. You have what many people dream of. Start valuing that. Start valuing, uh -uh. Your, start uh -uh. valuing. No guys, no guys, don't go at anybody. Look, they're not being rude. Don't be rude back. Each other. I got it. Learn how to work with the man you have. Because there was something about you that made you want him to say, I do. Get back to that instead of, you know, and forgive yourself too. You got to forgive yourself for getting on this. I'm better than him. I got a master's and all that other kind. You got to forgive yourself for that too, but stop doing that. You got to forgive yourself. You got to forgive him. You got to forgive each other. And you got to move forward on the same page. Can you do that? Can you try to do that? All right. Hope she can try to do that. 
All right. <clears throat> oh, she got disconnected. Can you hear me? Oh, I can hear you now. Yeah, I asked myself, is this really what I'm supposed to be doing right now? Because, you know, I allowed the chit chat from, you know, external forces. What do you mean? Is, is this what you're supposed to be doing right now? What do you mean? Question your well, marriage? No. Well, yeah, well, exactly. Try to move on. And I couldn't, I couldn't bring myself to do it. And I, I'm still faithful to him. That's the crazy part about this. I thought that I would just be able to move on. Well, but, I think ultimately, you know, it's wrong. Yeah. Exactly. You have the same thing he's done wrong. See, you, you really want to garner respect with your family? Tune them out. Mm -hmm. Tune them out. Detach right. with love. Let them say what they have to say, but don't involve them in anything else you guys got going on. And then you guys just move forward on your own page. The chatter will die down once they see they can't move you. Mm -hmm. can, can, you, can, you can you try just some of the things I've talked about? I can. All right. And I would love to hear some feedback. So um, my email address is in the, uh, in the description. All right. People were asking me, are you still together? And actually, uh, last time I spoke to her, yes. They were still together. She actually took my advice. But again, she called in. Go back and play. Go back and listen to the ending of that call versus the end of that call. That whole, I was duped. I was all this. And I'm like, again, all I did was ask questions. I questioned what she was saying. Now, I can't be upset with a woman or anybody who would ask the question about being in a homeless shelter. Who wants to be in there? But what I kept having her focus on is you weren't there by yourself. You were there with your husband. That's what these things are for. You know, there was a time in this country, look at what's going on in the Midwest right now, opioid crisis. You know, only in the black community, when, when we rely upon government systems and so forth, we savage our men. But other groups can rely on them. And we want to sit back and say, oh, that's just being a taxpaying citizen. But we're going to keep on moving forward. Because like I said, I had some women come and say, you know, that that's that's an extreme circumstance. That's not what typically happens with, with you know, typically it's worse. Uh, that, that, that's not the big, really? Really? Okay. Well, this whole level up, securing the bag thing, I asked, to, you know, I'm all for female hypergamy. I'm damn sure for it. You guys saw my broadcast where I said a man should be. A man should pay for everything, and women should be hypergamous. But like I said, for the men, women should be hypergamous. Do you want to marry? Do you want to marry well? Upper middle class, lower upper class life? Do you want to be required to work to pay significant bills? Most women say they don't, especially women coming over here. But can you live up to that standard when you get that kind of man who's making that kind of money, 300 plus thousand dollars a year living in Dallas, Houston, Austin. See, that's where we start having the disconnect. It's like, what? I need to be a dress size four. Yeah, that's right. You need to be looking like the soccer moms in the neighborhoods in which you're going to be living in. You don't get to be a dress size 10. You can't be five, five, 175. No. Now you want to do this going to upset you down. You never have to lift a finger to pay a significant bill ever again in your life. Put your kids in, in private school, have college funds, 401k investments, stock options, travel, everything else to where you can actually decide to do a business when the kids are no longer school age. Yeah, all that good stuff. Right. Let's keep it going. This is what the level up conversation is. And I just want to ask the question. Don't think about what I'm saying. Ask, did that help her? The stuff that she was hearing, did it help her? Because she came, she said no. Didn't. But when you're in, a, in an echo chamber with a bunch of other people saying all this other stuff, and no one has to show the results. Like again, if you're out here selling, uh, selling medicine, you got a cure, great. But I love to see some of these level up results. 
because what I tend to hear more of is these situations. Let's go to how's everybody doing? We got we got the next part. Then we're gonna have actually call in coming. Again, moderators let people talk as long as they're not disrespectful. Cool. Content creators are content creators. I don't expect you all to agree, guys. When you when I put this title out there, they're going to be dissenting views. They're going to be people that come over from other channels, uh, act like the CIA men you are. Blake Henry, Blue Henry, Hit Squad. Remember who you are. Because as men, you set the tone. All right. I actually, in, at first I was going to call in in reference to the young man, but then you were soliciting the ladies. So okay. I decided to give it, give it a try. Okay. What's your first name? So I know what to address you as. B. B? Yes. Okay. B. I want to keep, I want to remind you guys, it's been six months, countless shows, Countless men, countless women, a full video roster of content. And I want you to hear, I want you to listen to see if you hear anything that sounds familiar. What do you got for me? Um, well, I was actually calling in because you had asked, you know, um, do, do the ladies, like, do you qualify for a high quality man? Um, so... You know, I guess just to provide a little bit of perspective, I guess when I'm looking at the chat, it looks as if women over 30 don't really qualify. Um, this year- Hold on, let, June, me, let me clear that Let me clear that up. I didn't say that. Oh, wait a damn minute. What are y'all doing on the likes? Man, we got 245 likes and 700 some odd people. Man, if y'all, man, look here. I guess y'all don't forgot where y'all are. Uh, do not have women, y'all don't come over here now and be embarrassing me. Uh, broke by broke, go ahead, put some money in the collect. The doors of the church are now open. We're taking up the offering uh, for the guest minister. Come on, man. Are you kidding me? We need to get the likes up to over 500. Like, don't play those sound effects. We're going to have the sound effects. There you go. Thank you, people. A little bit more. We're almost there. you guys to judge it on your own i don't want you to i want you guys to be able to judge this on your own that's why i'm doing the replay that so you can judge it on your own the game is different over 30. i want to make sure that's 100 percent clear go ahead okay well i'm 27 uh i'll be 28 in june okay um and you know 
I, I know, I feel like I know where I rank on the sexual marketplace. Okay. But, you know, I guess from watching your channel, I just found you like two days ago. From watching your channel, my guess is that, you know, it's best to hear that from a heterosexual male. Well, there you go. I I'm curious, oh, how man. did you find me? How did you find me? <laughs> oh, gosh. Did I pop the name up and recommend video, it or something? It was recommended. Really? The name of the video was Ladies do you qualify okay. can you get a high value man should you be a stay-at-home wife something like that okay. and for some reason i clicked on it i was like what is this you know i clicked on it and it was a really nice setup you know you had the candles and all that stuff so i was like this is really cool but what i like about your channel um so i watch you know other youtubers like i think you guys mentioned him before we we talked about like the chrissies and stuff uh -huh. i like that you do hold both of us accountable it's it's both black women and black men we both need to be held accountable yes so, um yes i find it interesting that i'm being my name is kevin samuels i'm a personal and corporate image consultant life coach um a lot of the guys i work with are, are the guys that a lot a, a lot of women want to deal with uh, and mm -hmm. as a blue, as a white collar man myself, um, I've lived this kind of environment. So I find it interesting that there, I'm, I'm being recommended to more women these days. But let's get into it. You're 27 <laughs> and you're a sister, right? Yes. Did you go to college? I did. Cool. Uh, mm -hmm. What did you go to school for? I graduated in real estate. Okay. Uh, let's. Uh, so since you're anonymous, B. Uh, no one knows you. I'm not doing any back tracing. What city are you in? <laughs> I'm in the DMV area. DMV area. All right. So this is where you're going to need to tell the truth. Do you want to be a stay-at-home wife? You know, I really was thinking about that because to be to be open, um, I do. I have a child. Okay. Um, my son's father and I, we have a great co-parenting relationship. We do talk about, you know, potentially getting back you know, together and stuff. So, um, but I know that I'm not, um, I'm not automatically saying like, oh, I deserve a man that doesn't have kids or anything like that. I try to find somebody who's, you know, maybe has kids, somebody who's preferably 10 years older, but you know, right. I'm okay. I'm totally open with someone who has kids, obviously. How, how old is your child? Uh, he's three. Okay. So you still in the baby daddy, me and me, me and him may work face. I refer to him as my son's father. I have a lot of respect for him. But that's um, cool. Yes, I mean, I, I, look, <laughs> no, no heat. I'm just trying to understand. So, mm -hmm. um, well, so if things, is he older than you? There we go. Mm -hmm. Not by that much, just by a little bit, like is three years. Is he a provider so, male? By a little bit. I, so the thing is, is that I, when I first met him, I didn't understand how he was. We have two different money languages. Mm -hmm. I didn't understand how he was. Now that I look at his father and how his father is towards his mother, I see. Um, he's in the, I believe he's still in the the beginning stages of his career. Um, so he works as like a CPA. He's in like accounting and stuff. Mm -hmm. He's also a- He's a CPA. Beginning stages of his career. Comes from a middle-class two-parent household. Met in college. Member of um, what is it? The K of uh, Kappa Alpha Psi. So yeah, yeah, so he's that's like what I am. Brother. Yeah, I know. So, I know. So <laughs> I can so, tell. So the net. So what I'm hearing is the answer is no. Is he or isn't he? Because a provider male either is or is not. Oh no, he provides for um my son. He definitely provides for my son. Let me let me um, do, right let me now, let me clear. He provides for her son. See again, over here, we deal with the top 10% of men. No struggle. Okay, provide now. a meal, meaning he want the, he is he is willing to pay a hundred percent of the bills. If we were together. Yes, yes. that's that's ultimately <laughs> what it means. Ultimately, that's yes. what a provider meal means. He's willing to pay a hundred percent of the bills. All right, so um I don't know him. Mm -hmm. So Let's go down the path. If it doesn't work out, do you want to be a stay-at-home wife or do you want to work? I would love to be a stay-at-home wife and um, support the family and, you know, cultivate an environment where it would be peaceful for him to come home. You know, he goes in. Understand, for the pe people who may be joining over here, a stay-at-home wife, I've defined that as a man who's making in excess of $300,000 a year 
in Dallas, Austin, or Houston. Because stay-at-home wives want two or three kids and they want a car. They're not wanting to have to cram into the minivan and go to uh, the buffet. We all know what we're talking about over here. So $350,000 a year, Dallas, Houston, Austin, San Antonio, Atlanta money. Adjust for your cost of living. Just for the new people, because we have new people coming by. Guys, because there are going to be some ladies who don't come to this channel who don't understand what CIA, FBI, Henry, Blake, Blue, Hit, all this stuff means. We got to educate them. That's what he, he needs to do. Uh -huh. And I play, I, I would 100% love to step into that, that role. And I know he wants more kids, but I said, no more, no more, no more kids out of wedlock. No more. Okay. So we're having two different conversations. I'm, I'm talking about if it doesn't work. If it doesn't mm -hmm. work, you want to be a stay at home wife still. And understand what I mean by stay at home wife, meaning you don't want to be required to work in order for the money you make to go towards substantial bills. That's what yes. that's what it means to be a stay-at-home wife. Mm -hmm. So is that what you want? Do you want yes, to be required to work in order to pay substantial, significant bills? No. No. All right. So let me tell you, to all this black women, y'all just need to start being, just telling the truth. All the, all the extra words... <laughs> I'm just like, mm-hmm, you're just talking. Because the more words you use, the more the, the more of a yes it is. You're just trying to soften it. <laughs> the reality <laughs> is you got a child, and you and my frat brother uh, are doing whatever y'all do. If it work out, y'all will work yourself out. But if it doesn't, you still want to go out here and find a man to set you down to be a stay-at-home wife. Now, of course, just without knowing you, that's going to be uh, a strike against you. A child counts against every woman. I know. Uh, and and you are over, and you almost, you're getting 27, you'll be 28 when? In June. June. Next ooh, month. so you got two years before yeah. you hit the wall. Um, <laughs> uh, height, weight, dress size? 5'5", five, five, 135. Um, I, I feel like a, it depends on the brand, but let's say a size 6, just to be okay. fair. All right. Um, uh, I don't want to get into sororities and stuff like that. So here's the thing. Um, my suggestion is always marry the baby daddy. Yeah. I, I, I've been both. I've been both. Mm -hmm. I've been a stepfather and my first daughter, my first child, my only child was born out of wedlock. It is so much easier. Yeah. Um, I don't know why you guys aren't together, but here's the side. Uh, is he? You have a son or a daughter? We have a son. Okay. Ooh, having another man have discipline over your child, over your son, because you want to provide a male. If your son needs a, a butt whooping, the belt is coming out. <laughs> there ain't gonna be no negotiation, B. Yeah. So let me go ahead and let me let level set you on some things about what it means to be a stay-at-home wife. One. Whatever religion, whatever church he wants to go to, that's where you're gonna go to. Uh, he's at. You are the stay-at-home wife. He provides everything outside of the home. I mean, unless you're working on social media, or whatever. Don't be surprised if he says you don't need to be on that much social media because a lot of BS happens on that. But let me get on to the important things. Discipline. Mm -hmm. Discipline. 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 Do not be surprised if a provider type male says, "Yeah, B." You do it for me, but here's what's gonna take. All right, I'll marry you. I'll set you down. I'll be a. You, you can be my wife. We're gonna have to send Lil B down with his daddy. We're gonna have to give full custody to his daddy. We're gonna pay child support. We're gonna be non-custodial. Would you be willing to do that? I would, but you know, I I think ever since I found your your channel, I well two days ago, I was really just thinking about it. You know, I think. Maybe I'm not giving him enough credit. That's possible. As far as, the th yeah, as far as the things that. Why are um, you guys not together? Um. So. I don't a, know you, ladies. Story, but, tell me. <laughs> <laughs> um. I when I graduated back 2016, um, he had asked me maybe a few weeks before um, if he could propose to me on graduation day. 
Uh, and his mom had told me later on that, you know, he had had the ring and she was hiding it away from me and all that stuff. And <clears throat> he asked her, could he propose to her on graduation day? His biological mother had the ring because he didn't just ask. He acted CIA. He asserted. He went out and bought the ring. He asked her father for a hand in marriage. What if I say you ain't been proposed? You're not been engaged unless a man drops to one knee, pre presents a ring with significant heritage in public. And that black man who is a CPA wanted to do that for his woman. People who've seen the show before, don't spill the beans on what's coming down the line. Let me do this. Um, I had told him, I said, you know, don't, please don't propose to me on my graduation day. That's my day. You know, I, I am, you know, I'm, you're going to take away my shine from school. You know, I was all in that masculine energy. I really didn't understand. And so that you was raised one by your mom and dad? Yeah. Both of my parents. Um, yeah. Uh, my mom, she stayed at home for a little bit and then Does your father know, does your father know your, uh, your BD? Yes, absolutely. Okay. Yeah, he's got he's got permission. So you know, my dad, you know, told me. Whoa, 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 uh, whoa, 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 whoa. Wait, B, hold on. Wait a minute. Wait a minute, B. Wait a minute, B. Yeah. Your 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 dad, your father, knows your BD, and your absolutely. BD got permission from your dad for your hand in marriage. Yes. And you decided to raise up and say, "Uh, don't propose to me because this white man ceremony." With this little piece of paper with this with this thing is more important than being your partner for the rest of my life. So don't do it on that day. Is that right? Yeah, I um, you know, I'm I'm look, I'm I'm coming clean. <laughs> Hold on, let me let me give you another one. Yeah. Come on, sis. I know. And did I know. you already have the child by that time? No. No, 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 no. Um, so then for graduation, uh, we went on like, you know, a cruise to celebrate. And we went with two of our best friends. They're married. And um, we, you know how the cruises, they have the little steakhouses and stuff. And mm -hmm. um, he tried to do it again that night. So she didn't want to be proposed to on her graduation day with hundreds of thousands of other people there because it was presumably all about her. So this man went on a dinner cruise with her and married folks and had every intention of proposing to her again on this steakhouse dinner cruise with married people. Yet black men don't want to get married. They's all dusty, and crusty. That's why you got to level up and get it back okay and i remember looking at him in the restaurant and i could see the look on everybody's faces and um he was getting ready to do it and i just kind of so what like is it, what is this he's a cpa mm -hmm. so his degree was in accounting yes and your degree is we in what in college and what's your degree i said huh real estate you went to real estate college no 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 um i graduated with a bachelor's in real estate okay so this is what i'm gonna have to ask you a real hard question Sure. Do you? Ultimately, I'm asking, do you feel like you're better than him? Um. Yep. Honestly, up until this. Yep. Yeah, I'm, yeah I'm, I'm, I'll be honest. Yeah. Mm -hmm. up, yeah. <laughs> up until two days ago. Yes. Um, until I found your channel, which I'm really glad I did because it really. And, and shout out to the caller for being very transparent and very honest. She, she understood now. I mean, and got to give them credit, guys, because a lot of women come to these sides and they're not moved. She only found this a couple of days ago. And, um, you know, it was a revelation. But we continue. Provided a different perspective. So, and I well, see... let's, let's, get to the, let's get to the root of why. Um, mm -hmm. Was he raised with his mother and father? Mm -hmm. All right. So, uh, as far as looks, uh, do you guys look 
like you guys match as far as uh, physicality? Yeah, I think so. And looks really didn't matter. Really doesn't matter to me. Well, okay. But I mean, so what I'm trying to understand is this. this. You sound like you have a stable upbringing. He has a stable upbringing. He has, yeah. uh, he asked your father for your hand in marriage and this man wanted to marry, propose to you twice and you were gonna, and you didn't want him to. Uh, no, don't listen, breathe, I, breathe, 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 breathe. I, I got it, I got I'm it. I'm breathing, I'm breathing. I got it, I got it. <laughs> this okay. was before you had a child. Mm-hmm. How long had you guys been together? Oh, seven years. And okay. at that point, I got it. Probably- it. I got mm-hmm. it. I got you have been together since high school. No, no, no. Right after high um, school? Like uh, it was like two weeks of my freshman year. I met right, him and we right, lived. Right, this- right. Yeah. So you ready? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm ready. <clears throat> you were still possible. There was part of you thinking you could do better. Mm-hmm. I think. What I'm saying is when a man knows he when when a man knows he wants to do something, he does it. They were together since the second week of her freshman year. All through high school, all through college, and he's still there. Wanted to, he wanted to do the right thing and lock her down in her youth so he could provide for her and his children. Hmm. Isn't this what so many black women compa- complain that they don't have an opportunity to do like their white counterparts? We don't have what Becky has and my Ling and Marisol and I knew we don't have black men who are willing to do this for us in our youth. Sorry, I work with too many men every day who are in the top 10% of men who have a similar story. Maybe not this extreme, but similar. I've lived this. I've seen this. I've seen this. You thought you could do better. You you liked him. You loved him. You had history. But I'm a new graduate. I am out here, and I am fabulous, and I am fierce, honey. You don't know. I may find a guy whose elbows I like a little bit better. His left, his back, his molars may be a little straighter. And he, yes, sis, you thought you were better and you thought you could do better. This man, and this man tried to lock, mm, I need you to sit down. Take your shoes off and get comfortable. I'm sitting down. I have a glass of wine. I need you to sit down and get comfortable. (laughs) You made the classical mistake that so many sisters make. You, you won two soon with no pain you thought you were supposed to suffer you thought you were supposed to go get on the cock carousel and get hurt by the big juicy cock and you thought you thought it was supposed to you were supposed to be singing beyonce songs and hot girl songs and shit you weren't supposed to be doing what the white girls did right out of college and married no no it needed to hurt some Yeah, admittedly, again, this is me just coming clean. Admittedly, what was that, 2016, I wasn't thinking about settling down, having a family. You know, I I wanted to be like my Yeah, see, there's the truth. So many black women in your youth, you don't want to settle down when you find a perfectly suitable man. You want to get out there and see if you can better deal him up. So you can find a better deal. See, these guys aren't lying when they say you don't want them. You want to try all these guys over here are bitter. I I don't deal with bitter men. And you have women coming up here admitting so some of you ladies can hear it. And my question is only, can you level up or secure the bag? Are you too good? Are you too good for your own good? She didn't want to settle down. It's I'm too young to get married. You need to get out there and see what's out there. Girl, you don't want to get tied down too quick. That's that bullshit that my mother's generation, the baby boomers, told Generation X. 
It's that bullshit that my mother's generation, baby boomers, told Generation X. That's why we have so many of our sisters right now over 40 years old by themselves. And they have stories of how they had perfectly acceptable, suitable, capable, competent men in their youth, but they kept on trying to better deal them. They kept on trying to level up. They kept on trying to secure the bag. Got no problem with you wanting to level up. Got no problem with you wanting to secure the bag. The question is, what does that mean? Friends. Um, so how did you I end up getting I pregnant then? I don't want to. I don't want to marry you, but I'm gonna go ahead and drop this insurance baby off right here. Sorry, B. But this is what it is. I'm gonna drop this insurance baby off right here. So in case I can't get out of here and get Idris or a ball or a shot call or whatever, I can keep you emotionally tied up and, and, and into me because I know you love me more than I love you. I know you're into me more than I'm into you. So when I go ahead and give you a son, I can go ahead and root your emotions more into me. And then I can go ahead and get some of that bread and get you real nice and stable. And then I also put a kid on you so you won't be as attractive to other women so I can really fuck your shit up out here. So if I decide that, you know, after 34 or so when I can't level up, I can go ahead and settle for you and make you feel like you won. Yeah, that's what that, that's that play, ladies. I mean, I understand you guys were sexually active for seven years, but out of college, you were, were you on birth control in college? Yes, and I, you know, okay. got off. I was thinking, oh, it's not going to happen to, to me. Ah, ah, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> Hold on. Did biology stop all of a sudden? Why would it not happen? <laughs> no, no. All right, sis. I see the airplane I don't, I don't, that doesn't have the ring of truth to it. And you're 20, you got pregnant at 24? 25. 25. Yeah, 24. So you'd been out of school for how many years by that time? It was not even a one full year. Right. And mm. yeah. Have you seen, oh, mm. does he watch this show? I hope not. All right. Well, <laughs> I'm not going to ask this question. But the question I it's was okay. going to ask you. <laughs> Is if you saw the men, or you if you guys had if, if you guys have been monogamous for the seven years, don't answer that. Oh yeah, oh I okay. I know okay. I have. But... All right, so oh, so your body count is even low. So let me get this right. All the stuff that a lot of sisters complain about, not getting men that want to wife you up early on, not wanting to cuff you up, do the right thing in your youth so you're forced to get out here and date and get out here in the open sexual market run your body count up had it all one and i will tell you i knew many men like this right out of college hell i was one yup i was one with my ex-wife and she'll tell you to this day i won too soon I didn't know what I had till it was gone. How come you think I can diagnose this so well? I've seen this happen too much with these uh, people ask if she's in a sorority. She didn't say if she was, but you could obviously tell she was in that talented 10th kind of vibe. Where a CPA ain't good enough for you? Oh, good. Good. Oh. So, again, your girlfriends, your your female friends, do, do any of them have what you have as far as a man? So, um, admittedly, one did. Um, she was married, but just this year, you know, she decided that that's not what she wanted anymore. And now I'm realizing the importance of choosing um, the type of friends that I'm around. Um, she, again, I can't blame them. I'm taking full responsibility. Hold on, for, hold on. Let me back up. So your friend, you had a friend who divorced her husband. They're now separated. But, um, she, but, she, but she initiated the process. 
Twenty-six percent of black women are married, and you got two right here: one who's uh, separated on the way to divorce, and another who wants to level up. Who's leaving black women? So when you hear all these black men ain't this, black men ain't that, eight out of ten divorces are filed by black women. Eight out of ten black marriages break up because black women leave them. So when you're one of the four that gets one, why are you walking away from it? She's going to tell you her friend walked away, not because of anything horrible, irreconcilable differences. Uh, I think I can do better. Your chemistry wasn't right. The sex wasn't. Well, th th there'll be a reason. You know, always make it sound like it's the guy. Just like the previous caller, this one. And it's all packaged as something noble, talking about leveling up and securing the bag and becoming the best version of yourself and all that other stuff. But is it helping? From what she has told me, not, you know, not throwing your business out there, but yeah. All right. And did she tell you is it because he was beating her? Was he doing it? Or was it just irreconcilable differences? She's not happy. Maybe reconcile. Yeah, she's not happy. And All right. maybe she didn't think it was, was okay. what it was. So, uh, okay. So. You and this woman are already in the 26% of black women who have found a husband, but just your friend is one of the eight out of 10 black women who walk away from marriages that they really shouldn't be walking away from because of this hypergamy grass is greener on the other side. I can't deal with her. But what I'm telling you is you got to, I don't know, maybe you, you, you're solo on under a good star, but uh, your life is not out there with uh, another man. You you need to be happy that you found this because I'm going to tell you, what you need to do is you don't need to walk. You need to run back to that man and and beg for his uh, I don't know if to say beg for his forgiveness but do whatever you have to do to reassure him that you understood what you have in him. But let me tell you sis real talk, you ain't going to find that out here. <laughs> You ain't, baby mamas are side chicks. Five foot five, 135. You gotta ask yourself, when I said that, there are women that'll be like, oh, you can't tell her she can't find that out here. You don't know. Mm-hmm. But knowing what you know as a single woman, you're telling her to get out here and play those odds with a child in tow. See, that's why I laugh when unmarried women tell that to Women who got a man. Yeah, girl, come out here and get on Bumble and Tinder with us. Get out here and do what we're doing. Ra ha 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 ha. Sounds, you, 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 you sound perfectly lovely. But baby girl, you're going you're gonna to get passed around and you, you're going to just up your body count. Mm -mm. And the likelihood of somebody taking on that and marrying you, especially when they start hearing this backstory. No, 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 no. We're almost done. Yeah. You got lucky. You got lucky. And he's still talking to you and dealing with you? Oh, absolutely. We have a great relationship. Oh, well, but, I think, but he loves yeah. you. So that's my point. He loves you. Yeah, I realize that, you know, well, kind of now. Uh, I think you think to the hypergamy and the level up coaches and oh, stuff Jesus like that. Christ. You do see, get lost in that. That's so. what I want. And there it is. It's that hypergamy, that level up. I said he loves you. She's like, yeah, he does. But listening to the level up and hypergamy coaches, you get lost and locked up in that. Ladies, listen to your sister tell you. She was listening to, she was being marketed to, being sold to. And she had, she'd already won at home, but she was being convinced that it wasn't good enough. And how they sell this stuff is by telling you all the horror stories. Oh, yeah, well, they tell you all the horror stories that men ain't this and ain't that, and they beating them and cheating on it. You don't hear this. Where have you heard what I'm showing you tonight on an image? I'm an image consultant and a life coach. Where are the relationship channels, the Steve Harveys of the world, 
the Tyler Perry's of the world? Where, where are the people who make their bread and butter in relationships talking about black men of this character? Whether you had to do the failed, whose mother died and he went through some shit, but he's still there. Or whether you had a dude that's been doing it right since day one. Both are there. What? Who, who's telling y'all about them? Certainly not the hypergamy and level up coaches. Again, I got no problem with you leveling up. You know my position. You don't have hypergamy bigger than my ambition. Trust and believe that. But where is it? culture that is ruining so many black women out of functional relationships understand yeah. you both come from stable families and you won yeah. what is it that you want to level up to how much money does he need to make how cute does he have to be how good does the sex have what is it that what would what would what would the you of a week ago classify as winning well, I think another thing that I kind of was taking into play was um, I was worried about being, you know, you hear about the starter wives. So I was like, OK, well, I don't want to be a starter wife, you know, and I know right now, obviously, I'm, I'm faced with the fact that, yes, I made a decision. I have a son. Wait a minute. The starter um, wife. It, this dude tried to marry you twice right now. Don't want to be a starter wife. What she said, don't want to be a starter wife. But in order to be a starter wife, you have to have a man who has the potential to hit high heights. Middle class or average guys don't have starter wives. And she didn't want to be the starter wife. Where did that concept come from? Where is that in normal, everyday functioning relationships? The starter wife. It's more of those poison pills. And all I'm asking is for every woman who's got who's in the starter wife situation, how many perfectly happy and healthy women have destroyed their relationships? And let me tell you something. All the starter wives that I know or, or, or know about, members of the first wives clubs, are very well off. Because the word wife is on that motherfucker. Starter wives are paid. First wives club are paid. Man, it's anyway. Ooh. The college. Yeah. yeah. That doesn't make any sense. No, she's not trash. You're making Maybe up problems. Favorite. Yeah. Okay, you got to be honest with yourself, sis. You thought you could do better. And all I'm asking is what would what would better look like? What would winning look like? He obviously had to make he obviously had to have more than what you had. Was it better looking, more money? Maybe maybe back then it was um Which one? There are two things there. Hmm. Money. I'm not ready to. I, I guess right now I don't know. I, I can only speak for how I was feeling maybe when I found the level up journey. Money. Um, that whole level up yes. is never about looks; it's about money. Let's cut to the chase. Mm -hmm. Needed yeah. a dude that was not an accountant. You needed a lawyer, a doctor, a baller. You needed a dude with fast money, quick paper. You didn't need no boring ass dude that was doing balance sheets and on one knee singing baby face songs to you. You needed some passion. I get it. And, and, and all this shit almost got, and this guy, what I need you to understand is you're talking to a man who did not look to do this for a living. This is not part of, anyway, the guy wanted to propose to you in front of, if you watch my channel, he wanted to propose to you in public twice. Got your daddy's approval. And then let you shut him down twice. And he is still dealing with you. You are so, so, so lucky. You, th There is nothing about being somebody else's wife or anything else. You should ever be the... See, I need you to understand what I'm about to say. You won too soon. 
and you don't know how good you have it. Let me tell you, you, you should not need to have sex with five, ten more men to realize, ah, I had it with him because you're not going to be the same chick. And once he, and once you finally break his heart enough to where he's done, here's, are you ready? I need to brace for this one. This is going to sting. I got the line. Okay. It's okay. You know he loves you more than you love him. So you always mm-hmm. count on the fact that he'll always be there. Let me tell you, that ends. And once he decides no more, you can't go back through that door. Want me yeah. to give you my ex-wife's phone number? She'll tell you all about this. It's right. It's rough as for hell. And you'll spend the next decades regretting. That's as real as it gets, sis. You got a black man yeah. who's a CPA. That means he can own his own business. Whatever friend, yeah, whatever friend that was that left her husband, you need to delete her out your phone. Mm, yeah, I've been, you know, kind of keeping it very short and distant. Well, <laughs> but yeah, I, I know since I've been on the level up journey, I will say there's been good things. Like I've learned to be a bit more rest in my femininity and learn to kind of let him take lead. Mm-hmm. And I hope that I didn't emasculate him. Oh, yeah. Okay. So to this point, she said, being in the level up journey, there are some good things. She's learned to rest in her feminine energy and not emasculate him. And she hopes she has emasculated him. I can, I can believe what she's saying. And I'll tell you why, guys. The things I was saying to her were not easy to hear. And you're not hearing a bunch of combativeness. Even when I said some really pointed things, you can still hear the femininity. And she sought this space out. So I won't, I'm not going to, nothing is all bad. And I honestly don't really, I, I choose not to believe that everybody out there talking about leveling up and securing the bag, as far as truly coaching, the coaches anyway, are coming at, are, are trying to come at this from a manipulative uh, run through and destroy men kind of thing. Now, the ones that openly tell you they don't care about men and their outcomes, they are what they are. But they don't hide who they are from women. I've listened to some of these women. They're very clear about what it is. If a man is just a tool, they'll tell you. Now, the question is, but the thing is, a lot of women out there are throwing all these people in the same place. And that's where it's on you, ladies. You have to determine who it is you listen to and why. Because if you're going to be making decisions and things in your life based on this information, you got to carry that cross. You hey, emasculate you know, the hell out nice of this dude. Wife. I know. Hold on, hold on, Erica. I'm going to put you on uh, the side, uh, sis. I'm going to put you on. The, I'm going to put you on a uh, mute for Erica. But I got to get to Erica. Um, you emasculated yeah. him. Yeah. And there are people in the chat room saying he deserves better. And the thing is, I I can feel what they're saying because. You, you don't strike me as the kind of woman that would have would have accepted the kind of treatment you gave to him. You really, this level up thing, that's a nice way of saying you think you're better than him. And if he ever gets to the point to where he realizes he's too good for this, You got a chance here, sis. Yeah. Don't blow it. Okay. Well, thank you. You got it? Hey, guys. Whether look, style, or life. All right. So, that was part, you know, I know that was long, guys. But I wanted you to hear them in their entirety. So, I can't be used to chopping and screwing and editing it, such and so forth, blah, blah, blah. Again. One person, six plus months ago, another another person, a day ago. Do we see similarities? Children? 
First woman was married. The second woman should have been married. But they had a kid already there. So, and that's the thing. Like I told the first caller, you got a kid. What are these kids in all this? This level up, mama need a whatever, whatever. These kids are what? Just collateral damage? So my, my question is this. To any women who are out on this, who are out on this level up, secure the bag kind of thing, my questions are very simple. Do you want to marry? Do you want to marry well? Upper class, low, you know, middle class, upper middle class, lower upper class life. Do you want to be required to work in order to pay any significant bills? If that's what you want, cool. Cool. Where are you in that journey? Have you, have you had a, are you in a situation right now to where you've already won? That's the question. Can you level up and secure the bank? Level up to what? What is leveling up from a, 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 a good man, a, a competent man, a man who's coming out as a, has a CPA? What, what, what does level up from that mean? What does he have to do? That's what a lot of these brothers, a lot of these men are saying. What do we need to do? He's a CPA. What does he need to be? A brain surgeon? And quite honestly, what are you? I mean, it's not like you're a, a, a Victoria's Secret model. Rebecca Lynn Pope, famous matchmaker here in Atlanta with a video of close of over a million views, said she stopped being a matchmaker for black women specifically because your, your, your standards, this list of stuff you had was unrealistic. She said that I look sat across from clients who, if they were presented with my husband, they would reject him. And she said, boo, you ain't as good looking as me or have what I have. And you'd reject my husband, Rebecca Lynn Pope. So sadly, I've heard this story too many times where women have actually won too soon. You won too soon. You won back in college. You won back in college. You won and then you lost it. And then what ends up happening? You can't get it back after you've lost it. Like I told a girl, hey, you're lucky he's still there. You better hope you don't blow that because when men hear this kind of stuff, they put you in the category of, oh no, you good time, but not long time. So the ultimate question is, but judging off of these conversations and conversations like this, is this level up conversation that's only with women? Is this secure the bag conversation that's only with women? Is that a good thing? Is it helping? Or when you have this conversation only with women, Can it lead to more of this, which I'll just say is confusing and chaos? Because none of these women called up saying, not saying, not saying that, you know, hey, I, I, I'm i looking up, level up. I'm looking to do this. I'm looking to do it like this last caller. He was talking about, yeah, you know, me and my BD are good friends and da, 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 da. And yeah, I'm willing to, you know, marry a man who's 10 years older than me. I mean, she was if I'd have had that conversation with her, she'd have had that conversation all about how to find the next dude, all, all to find the older man who's a lawyer or, or a doctor or uh, who owns his own practice, who can just set her down as if he would pick her over all the women without children. Let's talk about it. See, yes, those men are out there, but to those, but to, but to men of means like that, ladies, you are more often than not a side chick. And this is what I don't tend to hear from a lot of this level up movement. Tell him women who decide to have a child out of wedlock that you are a side chick. That you are a side chick.
Mm-hmm. I'm not understanding the concept of leveling up. Um, Mar Marcia C. Leveling up basically means this. I feel like I can do better than you, black man. You're cute, but I can do better. You graduated from college with an accounting, but I, I, I need six figures at 25. And I need a BMW. I need, I need all this stuff now. I was watching, a, admittedly, a strange channel, Madame Noir. And they had five men on the panel. But one guy made a point. He's like, you know, a lot of these women are saying they want a man who has all this stuff. And they want him to be in his 20s. And that's, and, and no man can do that. No, you're wrong, brother. No man, who, no, no working man can do that. You can do that if you're an athlete or an entertainer. See, this is one of the pro one of the problems we have in our community. When we have prized youth, and we have prized at, uh, athletics and entertainment over business. So now, what you see, so many women see what, what what they want. The guys with the quick money. They don't even want blue collar men. When I did the blue collar versus white collar video, that was. I open to a lot of a lot of women. They're like, I never looked at it that way. You you're only looking at the top percentage of the white collar dudes because the CPA is a white collar guy. So you're completely avoiding the blue collar men. And I'm talking about the enterprising entrepreneurs, the guys who own businesses and fleets and have many employees, the guys who outdo the white collar guys who work downtown. I'm not talking about the dudes that are just working by themselves. I'm talking about Blue Henry. Henry, high earner, not rich yet. That's what we talk about over here. High earners, not rich yet. Top 10% of men. So you completely overlook the blue collar guys who can really have the high, you know, mid six figure businesses. You look over them because they, they, they go to work and sweat. You got the white collar dudes. Okay. But you only want the top 10% of those dudes. The ones that are the six figures, $150,000 or more living in, in Oklahoma City, Dallas, Houston, Austin. You know, but you really, but in order to be able to sit down and not work for a living, you're going to need a guy making three $300,000 a year plus in order to have those three kids and you still drive your BMW and live out in the sub suburbs and blah, blah, blah. So that's the top 5% of white collar. So you don't want any of the blue collar dudes initially because they're uncouth, uncivilized, can't take them nowhere. Of all the white collar dudes, You'll, you'll look at the top 10% because that starts at $128,000 up. But truly, you'll only consider the top 5%. That's three hundred and fifty dollars on up. So you want 5% of the white collar men. You have cut out all of this over here. This ain't even 80-20. You're damn near at the top. 3% of men. And then when, when a black man can't do that, he's dusty. He ain't building nothing. He's trash. He ain't competitive. Because then when, even when he does do this, even when he does do this, you want him to be at home and come do, you want him to come home and go to the PTA meetings. You want him to operate like a matriarchy matriarchally raised black man but you want him to produce like a patriarchal man so let's get that right you want that top five percent three percent one percent man but yet you want him to still move like he was raised by his mama you still want to be a partner you still want to be able to have your say and all this other kind of stuff. So it's like, well, that's what leveling up is. I mean, did I miss anything, anybody? Is that not what these women really are talking about when they're talking about level up? Because I just described the man they want. The guy that goes to work, and he may work from eight to five, Maybe eight to six, but you know, he's certainly not working from, you know, you know, eight to eight or eight to 10. No, he's still at home and, and time enough to sit down at the table to eat dinner with the family and, you know, help the kids with their homework and that kind of stuff. He's not just coming in, kiss the kids on the head at night after they already sleep, 
have a drink, relax a minute, and then you break. Oh, no, no, no. That's not what you want. That's leveling up for black men. Where they do that at? What what group what group of move black men over here? What what race of men move like that? Oh, uh, Michael, uh, Michael, I'm not I'm not even asking that question, Michael. See, what I'm not doing is I'm not asking questions whether or not they should. And I'm not throwing any. I'm saying, all right, sis, if that's what you want. Can you, are you fine enough, fit enough, and feminine enough to qualify to hold that man down? When he puts any kind of uh, standard or boundary on you, are you going to balk? Again, I could care less about your hypergamy. Be hypergamous, but just be able to deliver. And if you are like the blast caller and you find him early on, are you going to do like so many sisters do and string guys along? Do you know how many good men I know who have been strung along by black women who always are looking for the bigger nigga? Let's talk about it, God damn it. Come on back, uh, sis. Do you know how many black men I know who are good, solid, high earning, high value black men who wanted a serious, lifelong, committed marriage relationship with a black woman who did not want to move. She didn't want to do whatever. It, it, mm. know so many brothers like this. And these women are still single as today. Single. So you want black men to perform like white men, but you don't want to act like white women. Oh, shit. Oh, I said it. I said it. I done said it now. I done said it now. Oh my God, I done said it now. Woo, we done said it now, folks. You want black men to perform like white men, but you don't want to act like white women. Oh, shit. Oh, here we go. Here it comes. Here it comes. Here it comes. What? Yeah, I did a video two, three months ago. All right, sis, what are you willing to give up to get what you want? What are you willing to give up? What are you willing to give up? What are they willing to give up? Uh-uh. Give up? All I have to do is be me. I am a goddess. Uh-huh. Yep. I am a goddess. I don't have to do anything. What are you willing to give up? Sis, what are you willing to give up? Remember those seven questions I asked you? Are you willing to change your religion? Are you willing to give up all social media? I mean, unless you work as a digital marketing specialist, what you need Facebook for? What you need Instagram? What you need Snapchat for? TikTok? too old for that what you need all that for you ain't working you don't need linkedin you don't need no social media are you willing to give up all your friends yeah all your little toxic friends all them little single friends you got we make new friends we're we a couple we mr and mrs henry we go make new friends all the ones over here are gone are you willing to move far away oh yeah we live in uh california we live in Florida, we're going to Washington State. We're going to put a whole country between you and your friends and your past. It's going to be me and you leaving and cleaving. I am your entire world. Not I. Henry is. Are you willing to do that? 
Are you willing to, while you're working, because you're not going to be pregnant right off the rip, are you willing to have the your paycheck go directly into your husband's account? And he's the only signer on the account. You can have a card. You can be an authorized user, but not a signer. And he manages the money 100%. Yes, you work. Whatever, however you get money, it goes directly to him. And then he manages it out. Look at him cussing me out already. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Because, see, it's funny that so many women will do all, will give you a, will do, do all kind of stuff. You do all kind of stuff. You give your body up. But your money? Oh, well, now we got to talk. Uh-oh. And if you happen to have children, or if you happen to have children, are you willing to send the kids to be with their father? We give up custody to their daddy. And we become the non-custodial child support people because in our house, we're going to start fresh. We're going to raise our own kids. They need to go stay with their dad anyway. They need a dad in their life. We'll visit. Mm-hmm. Right. That way, that man's influence ain't in my house. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, Brittany. Uh-oh. They cussing me out, Brittany. Holy shit. They cussing me out. Or the last one. Baby daddy. Oh, I ain't giving him up. Baby daddy dead. My ex-husband, he, 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 was, he was killed in Chernobyl. He doesn't exist. Okay. Are you willing to allow Blake or Blue to discipline your little boy or little girl like their own? They don't have to consult with you one little bit. If if little Timmy needs his butt whoop, Blake comes through whooping ass and you don't question it. You don't question it. Then you don't question it afterwards. You don't lay in the bed and ask one single question because if it was biologically his child, if he put a bun in your belly and had it, you wouldn't question whether or not he loved that kid because you couldn't pull DNA rank. If he's going to have to provide for it, he's going to pay for the rent, lights, phone, everything else, college and everything else. Would you let him discipline a child just like you would, he would discipline his own biological child? See? Far too many women who want this kind of stuff, you've been used to pulling rank, and these kind of guys you're talking about who can set you down, they're not going to let you pull that kind of rank. Hell, look at 90 Day Fiance. You had this little bit 4 foot 11 dude would look like this, and he's trying to check this woman all left and right. Man, y'all better understand the position you're in. I don't care about the show. I just watched a little bit of it. The bottom line is this. A lot of women have won. You need to ask yourself a question right now. Are you winning? Do you have a man right now that is perfectly suitable, capable? Well, he, she might not like him. She may not love him. She might not be able to care. I don't care. I don't care a shit about liking and loving. Marriage ain't got shit to do with like or love. Let that come later. If it comes at all, you better make a deal. Mm-hmm. 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 Let's see what we got going on in the chat room. Now, again, for anybody who wants to throw shade or salt, we don't we see there's no dust over here. This is a dust-free zone. We don't deal with swippers. The men over here have the mindset of pay 100 percent for everything. Your hypergamy can't match our ambition. So all those little, well, what if, what if, no, 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 no. We got to go out and compete with the. We got to go out and compete with men of every other race and ethnicity and beat of uh, every other race and beat them. We're gonna get it done. So we take all your arguments away. Take all your well, what if, what if? No, we're gonna take all that away. Now, what you gonna do when you actually find the level? Are you up to the challenge? Hello. When you find the level, are you up to the challenge? How many of them are? They, all, they got awful quiet. Because see, what I hear a lot is, I hear a lot of talking about, yeah, but what about these low-down, dusty dudes? Every dude ain't like that. Every guy ain't like that. I don't care about all them. We're talking about the winners. We are the level. 
Are you on our level? My boys, Henry, Blake, Blue, Hit Squad. I'm not talking about me personally. It's just my channel. Are you on their level? You saw me styling women yesterday. <laughs> I styled black women yesterday. So you can't sit over here. Oh, they don't like white women. No, no, no. I, I styled nothing but, but African sisters yesterday. And they did it well. And you had brothers in here saying, wow, those are some beautiful black women. It's one of my most viewed shows. What happens, sis? What happens when you win? What happens when you find a bunch of men who are the, the caliber, the, cut, the kind of men you say you want, the kind of guys who can get out there and can, can compete with those men who are actually out there building on their own businesses? Competitive, intriguing, and aggressive, confident, intelligent, and assertive. They are the bag, bold, ambitious, and generous. Are you on their level? Because here's what happens when you decide to do what the caller yesterday might have made a mistake to do, or the caller six months ago. What you decide to do is you end up, especially yesterday, you end up breaking this man down to where he decides, you know what, I'm tired of this. And then Becky come along. That CPA is working. CPA is working at uh at one of the big four firms. And Becky come in there. Becky come through there. Uh-huh. Becky come through there. And the next thing you know, uh-oh. Becky come through there. And then you all sat up under the throat. You sat up under the throat. You sat up under the throat. Oh, 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 that didn't click on. Damn it. Damn. Becky, see what happens is you end up saying, you know what? It's just not you. It's not me. And then that brother get tired. He gets tired. And then another sister come along. He's like, you know, I date you. But what if, just what if he's one of those 30% of college educated black men who marry out? You know, the ones that y'all don't even want to talk to? The ones you don't even want to ask why they're marrying out? The ones you just assume, well, you're only going over there because white women are, 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 are freaky. Yes. Well, white women, they, 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 you can't handle a sister. You're right. Can't. All the stuff, all the tropes you want to throw at him, he's like, yeah, uh-huh, right. But you're still taking the L. What happens when you lose another to the dark side or the light side? How many of these guys can you, how many of the guys that were in these calls can you afford to lose? How many? How many can you afford to lose? Because what you do is you sit around and after you've won, but it ain't good enough, he's a CPA, yeah. But, 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 but he's not a, well, what else can you be outside of a CPA? He's not an MBA CPA. It's always something ain't good enough for the black man. And when brothers finally get to the point to where they understand their worth and they decide to move on and they're not throwing shade at you, they're not hating on you. They ain't cussing at you. They ain't, they ain't insulting black women. They're just moving on about their business saying, you know what? I was with my BM. I, I did my best. I tried to propose to her. I wanted to propose to her on graduation day. I asked for her father's, I asked for her father's permission. He gave me permission. I had the ring. My mama was holding it. I planned everything, but she didn't want me to propose because it was her day. So I waited two or three weeks, a month later, and we were on this nice dinner cruise at this really expensive steakhouse, and we were out with our married friends, and I was going to propose then, but she didn't want it then, so, you know, I, I hung around, you know. Yeah, we, we, got, we got pregnant within, within a year outside of college, you know, and I stayed around, did the right thing. I'm paying, I do whatever, and, you know, we have a great relationship. We co-parent well, like she said, you know, and I'm not with anybody else because, you know, I still love her and, you know, I'm hoping it can get back together. I mean, she's the mother of my son, but eventually that guy gets tired. And, or while he's getting tired, 
another woman comes along and says what the CDC says. Black men are the most involved fathers on the planet. Start realizing that, you know what? Ain't no man perfect, but these group of guys are pretty daggum good. Next thing you know, he decides to go that way. And everything you've been banking on, you thought you'd never lose them and they leave. What does leveling up look like? What does it mean? Ladies, I don't mind you saying level up, secure the bag. What, put some numbers to it. What does it mean? What does it mean to level up? What does it mean to secure the bag? What does it mean to win? What does it mean to secure the bag? What does it mean to level up? What does it mean to win? And have you won already? Let's see what's going on. Dominique say this hurts to hear. Why does it hurt to hear? I don't, I don't get why does it hurt to hear? What did I say? I want the ladies to call in and, and tell me where I'm wrong. I think I hit the right button this time. Uh-oh, Sugar P, uh, where did I mess up? Sugar P is getting on here. Ladies, I have no problem with you wanting to get the best provider mail you can. Go for it. But there are a lot of black ones out there. And they and as this channel has shown you, there are a lot of them that want you. Why can't y'all seem to find them? I don't get it. Sugar P, what's up? What's going on? There you go. Let me go ahead and let me go ahead and uh, bounce this down. Uh oh. How are you doing? I'm good. I'm good. Did you have a good Memorial Day? I can barely hear you. Let me turn you up a little. There you go. I can hear you a little bit better. Okay. So, all right. I am willing to hear what did I get wrong? Uh... Uh huh. Oh, okay. Let me see. Hold on. Hold on. Let me see. There you go. She hadn't said much. Cats. <laughs> she hadn't said much. She hadn't said much anything yet. No, I haven't said any. Can y'all hear me now? They should be able to hear you now. They should be able to hear you now. Okay, okay. People are still saying okay. the sound. Go on, Sugar P, tell them something about themselves. Okay, um, yeah, I found the conversation interesting. I mean, me and you talked, and I actually shared a similar story, I think, with you, with the second story, mm -hmm. actually, about my years. And I actually did have someone that was interested in Someone keeps saying, people keep saying they can't hear me. Yeah, let me see. Hold on, let me make sure. Oh, some people say they can. Yeah, I can hear you. Let me go ahead and uh, let me do the little test. I can hear you, but let me do it again. Hold on. Okay. Yep, you're just fine. They got to wait and refresh. Okay. Go ahead. So you had a similar story about what? Yeah, I remember sharing it a while back about how I had a guy that was interested in marrying me in college. And at my, you know, I was, uh, I talked about it before, my feminist and activist background, like way back, I was in the NAAC traveling. And so I feel like I had the similar mindset as her. Now, I don't think that guy was the one for me, but I could see how a lot of women will have that that mindset, especially because black women are taught, like education is our husband. Mm -hmm. uh, especially from older generations or women that come before us. And that's when we hit our like mid twenties or things like that. When we're like, wait a minute, you know, let me pull it back. And you start learning more. And some of us come to YouTube and start hearing different perspectives. Mm. And so it is interesting. And I feel like if you do find a quality man early on, I do think it's good to, you know, be open to that experience. And 
Um, I think there is a chance after that you can find what you want, Mm -hmm. but you do have to be willing to do the work. Like me, I talked about um, me growing up in a toxic household, Mm -hmm. um, a toxic mom. I talked about that on this, um, this show before, and I know that I probably do need therapy and that's something I am working on. I think a lot of us mm-hmm. need that. And so I, I recognize that um, if I don't work on that, then I will bring toxic habits into future mm-hmm. relationships. And so there are things you have to, I, you know, I lost weight. I mean, I'm like a, a size four now. There you go. Um, I, wasn't <laughs> I wasn't that big before, maybe like 135, but I'm mm-hmm. very small and petite. So it does show like on mm-hmm. my face and stuff. So I started. Well, you, are you in a sorority? Yes, Delta. Delta That's Sigma right. Theta. See, yeah. I knew you were <laughs> devastating DST. Give me a ooh whoop real quick for you. <laughs> <laughs> like, Come on, you supposed to belt that one out, man. <laughs> <laughs> See, go ahead. You know, I went to D when I went to DC after college. I feel like that. Um, Cause I grew up in the suburbs into first school, fourth grade, and I moved into like the hood. That after that, I went to college, so I seen I was exposed to different things, mm-hmm. and it, it. I started working at the age of fifteen, like taking the bus from six a.m. to get to work at nine, and so I think that also, you know, that masculine energy started then when I moved to. DC I started I was exposed to a whole different lifestyle like the proximity to power mm-hmm. the glitz I liked it I'm not gonna lie um different restaurant like French cuisine I love that mm-hmm. <laughs> and I started going to I started immersing myself in diverse communities I joined a rotary club hold on I, hold on hold on let's let slow up the diverse community thing you start seeing how non-black men and women interacted with each other. Yes? Yes. Because I will tell you, when I went into corporate America, one of the things that stood out, I'm not going to lie, I was bugging at how often white girls were going to weddings every... It was like, I got a wedding to go this week, I got one to go next week. I was like, then all the black girls were like, we going out to the club. I'm like... All the white girls is going to weddings and y'all all going to the club. Um, and if all we hang around is the same thing that we're used to, how did, how I, what I'm understanding is being around diverse groups of people gives you a different way of looking at things. It does. I think like... Go ahead. Oh, go ahead. Yeah. You know, until fourth grade, I was around diverse communities and moving to the hood when I went to my university, which was a PWI, that was a culture shock. In the was good because we have um, a big Jewish community. A lot of people don't know that um, Jewish communities have a lot of involvement um, in Black activist um, groups historically. Mm-hmm. And, then, and just going there. I mean, in DC, you have embassies, you have people from all over the world. And yeah, people are just open and welcoming. And we think we don't belong in these spaces, but I think it's just we don't put ourselves in them. Mm-hmm. Um, I enjoy, I talk to Kevin about this, I look at things like a game. I mean, I, I like, and maybe that comes from my political organizing background, but I like the social lifestyle. I like going to events. I love meeting new people. Wait, and, wait, 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 wait. Yeah. Tell people how you went from being a feminist to a feminine. Mm-hmm. Be- because... <laughs> well, because I think a lot of sisters feel like they're trapped and mm-hmm. you know you don't have to get deep deep into it but I think people overlook that and when when she says she, this woman was in DC and about a power structure and a black woman who had feminist uh, ideologies and now she hangs out over here uh, if she can you can do can you tell them can give them some tips some pointers or uh, when did it start happening? Did they need to go to the Rotary Club or what? Yeah, I, well, like other girls in that shared their stories previously, Kevin was showing, I too was listening to level of videos. So I started um, listening, dressing up more, mm-hmm. wearing color, not just black 
and things like that. And in DC, it's like the matrix. Everyone wears black. It's kind of ugly. Um, women are have a lot of masculine energy. Mm -hmm. And I know um, in the workplace, I had a lot of issues with women in the workplace because of the, and they will tell me because of the way I dressed or if I wore makeup or mm -hmm. things like that. I got attention from men and I realized DC workplace corporate wise was probably not the place for me. Right. And I think appearance is a a good place to start mm -hmm. to I guess reflect what you need to build up on the inside. Mm -hmm. I read books, I watched videos, I looked at different women like Monica Bellucci is someone I really like. Mm -hmm. Different women that have this feminine Which channel energy. does she does she have a YouTube channel? Oh no, she was she's an actress. My, okay, so my, I, okay, okay, go ahead. Body, feminine energy, regardless of what type of archetype um, they have, because I do think women, there are different type of women, and so we're not all the same. You don't always have to look like a Barbie, right? Um, but I do think that's a good place to start, like working on your, you know, reading the Bible helps mm -hmm. a lot too. Um, working on your spiritual side, being around other feminine women, women that are going to hold you accountable. Sometimes you will lose friends on the journey. Also, um, if you didn't know, there's a reason why my name is Sugar P. So I like was in this Sugar Baby game for a little bit, and then I stepped out. So mm -hmm. well, well, Monica, yeah, yeah, that's yeah, I know who she is. Um, Sugar <laughs> P, I ain't got no problem with it. See, as long as you learn along the journey, um, you down in Houston, glowing. How's that humidity? Yeah. The humidity is doing your skin good. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. So, uh, the School of Affluence. And do you ever watch any of those kind of channels? I love her. I love her. Yeah, yeah. So, sisters, there's a woman on YouTube. Her name, the channel is called The School of Affluence. She talks to your starts her videos out to Dear Elegant Ladies. And it's, to me, she's an average looking woman. She's had her weight issues and challenges. But feminine women need what she was just talking about, support. Um, you're going to get a different kind of conversation from men. But um, this is why I do agree with what Nicole Michelle was talking about. Uh, and like her feminine elite group, safe places for feminine energy, especially for black women to actually uh, to, to grow and be nurtured. Um, because uh, I don't know why this... I was thinking about how to do this show and the video popped up talking about the black, the strong independent black woman trope and how it's uh, hurting black women. Um, I'll put the video down in the description, but I'm glad you were actually uh, able to uh, come up, move over to the other side and people keep on asking uh, uh, if you got a husband or you've been proposed to, I don't know if you want to get all into that. If, if, you know, if you do, you do. I was a sugar baby, y'all. It was. It didn't last long. I think I stepped out because I'm getting, you know, I'm 26 now. Mm -hmm. uh, and I remember, that's how I met Kevin. I was on a mm -hmm. panel, a whole show. Didn't I do a show on sugar babies or something? Or was that before or after you? Um, I don't know. Maybe that was before me. Well, and here's the thing. I don't, I, look, man, I, 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 like the, I like the game. I have no problem with sugar babies. Uh, as long as you're a sugar baby, see, true sugar babies versus some of this wannabe shit I've seen down here in Atlanta is disgusting. You know, you tattoos and cigarette burns and baby, I'm like, no, true sugar babies, you, you're going to have to mess around with the school of affluence kind of woman because you're buying an experience. So cool. She's about to get proposed to, uh, are you guys back at work down there in Texas? We actually are. I start. I'm working from home, but I start teaching in August. Actually, right? Did you see my show yesterday? No, I. Well, I actually see styled the. Uh, uh, I did the uh, Black Girl Magic Makeover. I didn't. I have to watch it. You got to check it out. Check it out. Uh, um, it was pretty cool, and I did a black male image enhancement. But what could you tell? Um, what what do you think that I missed or I didn't cover? Or what else do you want to add to let women know uh, about this whole level up? Thing? Here's a question. When is it time to transition from strictly and only hearing the women talk about leveling up? When is it time to start listening to men? Oh, 
um, anytime. I think it's important to have that balance because sometimes you don't want to listen. Okay, I'm trying to figure out if I did. Women will tell you what you want to hear. I mean, it's the same thing as asking like um, a woman, what do you think a man will find attractive? You mm-hmm. know, sometimes you don't want to hear what men have to say right. on certain because women are going to talk to you from how we feel, not so much about how a man feels. Because I'm not a man. I don't know. I mean, I can only tell you so much. Mm-hmm. And I think it, at any time you can change. And I feel like if you really were, I mean, even if you're older, I still feel like there. it's not too late to be feminine. My mother and got to- married at 50. And she was, she was, she would put your feminism to shame. She was... I'm talking about ERA kind of film. Jesus Christ. Uh, whoo. Yeah, yeah. Here's the video about the black female trope. Uh, I'm putting it in the, in the chat room. Uh, are there any, ch- uh, any channels where uh, any other men's channels you think that the ladies should watch that you watch? Cause you don't have to come to me for everything. Cause this ain't what I do. I do. I speak about the things I'm good at, but guys, I'm an image consultant. I work with matchmakers uh, but you know, this is not my particular lane. There are relationship channels out there, dating channels, you know, um, w- what are some of the men that you watched? I think people talk about me. Y'all I'm from Texas. So I do have an accent. Good. So. Girl, stop looking <laughs> in the chat room. Stop looking in the chat room. If they, if you're in the chat room, they don't, you know how that go. And I watch is. I like, okay, some people might not like him. I do like Tony Gaskins for spiritual, like Tony Gaskins, okay. Spiritual healing. There's another man I like. But honestly, Kev, I pretty much listen to you because I feel like you're the only guy that doesn't only, like, talk about black women 24-7 that gets really annoying. Like, Mm -hmm. you also talk both sides accountable and I think that's very important it's not many people that do that in our community Mm -hmm. and uh, so I pretty much listen to you I don't get on YouTube much Mm -hmm. oh yeah I mentioned Ron Willis he's cool Mm -hmm. too but yeah I will say that I listen to Kevin (laughs) strange how the hell this happened I really don't know but um see I Somebody mentioned the sugar babies or gold diggers. I got no problem with gold diggers. See, gold, all these all these terms, man, gold diggers are for men with gold. I mean, that's the thing. If they're not in your ball, if they're not in your wheelhouse, there's no reason to get mad at, fem- at women for wanting men with resources. That's what they're supposed to do. So I think a lot of guys have a problem with some of the things I say, because on one hand, they like hearing me talk uh, talk to women in, 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 a, in a way, but then when I turn around and tell them, I need you to get out here and get after it also, so you're not vulnerable to all these things that you may find problematic with women, that's calling us to task. I appreciate you coming on, Sugar P. It was good to see you. Thank good you to see you, me. good to see you. Uh, I, I'm gonna send you an email. I got some things coming. I've had a, several matchmakers in the area actually Hit me up, and uh, I'm not going down that path, but uh, I'm going to email you about some stuff. All right, then. Okay. Peace out, Chica. That's Sugar P, y'all. The one and only Houston's finest. Guys, understand something. Yes, we have some attractive sisters that come around these spaces, guys. Um, No, I'm not a dating coach. Not not gonna try to be no day. I I stay in my lane. I've always worked with matchmakers, uh, image consultants, personal trainers, matchmakers. We go we we are we go hand in hand. Um, my unique set of experience, my unique experience, uh, allows me to come at it from a different way. Uh, but at the end of the day, I firmly believe that one, if you actually out. As a man or a woman out there trying to do your own improvement, personal development, I don't want to say self-improvement, but personal development for yourself, you can't ever lose this way. Let me let me let me give you guys a little bit of uh, a little knowledge. What here's the thing. Go in here. One of the best things I ever did um, was take a test called Clifton Strength Finders. 
Clifton Strength Finders is a test I took and I learned about my my personality and how my mind works and how my basically how my head is set up. See, and in learning how I think and why I think the way I think, it helped me become the better version of me. That's all you're really looking for. Out of all these people in the world, all we're really looking for is that one person that really you can just be yourself with. There are some guys who want to have a rotation until the cows come home. Do that. I am not telling you what you have to do. Not. All I'm saying is whatever it is you say you want to do, you need to understand the outcome you want to achieve and the inputs required for that outcome. There's no free, there's no free money. And, and if you want high outcomes, you got to put in hella inputs. I didn't make those rules up. All right, folks, I'm not going to hold you long. I hope this was a good show. Um, shout out to B. And here's the thing. I'm going to say this. I think B, I think B, uh, uh, has, I think her and her man have a shot. Cause here's the thing. I, let me, let me keep you guys. Let me keep you guys for a few minutes. Brothers. I, I know a lot of y'all have given up on black women. I know a lot. I, I, look again, listen, you know, you got to listen to me. You can't get triggered. You got to listen to what I'm about to say. You got to listen to what I'm about to say. My mother was a diehard, strong, independent black woman. And I've told the story about she got married 23 years ago to a man I never would have, the most unlikely man ever. My mother finally came to herself. And she's lived better from the age 50 than I ever saw her in my life. If my mother can, Sugar P talked about how she went from being a feminist to feminine. If women are starting to come to these spaces and share their stories and talk, I, I want you guys to understand that you don't need to write all of, women, all of femininity off, all of women off because of some poor experiences. Trust me, I've got my war wounds too. If I were to, if I were to get deep into some of my personal things with women, I got just as much reason as a lot of you guys to say, man, screw it. But instead, I turned it back to me and said, what was it about me that allowed me to choose this situation or more importantly, stay in this situation and put up with this? And I can tell you, once I started doing that work, my interactions with all women changed. All. I have not taken any regressive steps since I've been on that path of where I put Kevin's personal development first. And if you can see sometimes how it works on panels, you see how I can talk to women who want to speak. I can talk to them. You you guys have talked about it in chat rooms. Like, how do you do that? Well, I work well. I work well knowing, I know how I like to talk to people and I know that everybody wants to be heard. Um, in the black community in particular, we, if you want to, if you want to marry black, we're going to have to get to a point to where we start dealing with each other in a good faith way. Because I'll be honest, Obsidian sent me a video the other day. Um, it was his brother's channel called Master Teacher One. Five hours. I needed a drink and I don't even drink. I needed a drink and I don't even drink. Solo TV 84 got on the panel. Edward Anderson got on the panel. Archer got on the panel. But <laughs> there's no way that level of contention can exist between the male and the female and have anything uh, positive or healthy come out of it. And while a lot of women would love to say, yeah, 
Well, you say it's way too long, but understand something. I'm a content creator and I'm a professional too. So a lot of this, it, it, some of this stuff classifies as work. I mean, y'all don't turn, y'all don't tune in to hear me just, you know, waste your time. I got to do the work so you don't have to. Um, the point I'm making is we get nowhere as men writing it off is always external to us. Same thing with women. You get nowhere writing it off is always men's problem. We don't. If this last two months has shown us anything with the CV is we are extremely vulnerable as individuals. And I know from the, 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 the tremendous amount of emails and inboxes and stuff I get from both men and women, a lot of the popular talking points that get said out here does not line up with what people truly, truly want. You see, the sad part in, in the black community is we've gotten to a point to where black men and black women feel like they can't even say they want one another. If a black woman says she wants a black man, she's a pick me. If a black, if a black, uh, if a black woman says she wants a man, she's a pick me. If she says anything positive, anything affirmation, anything inspirational, anything other than you a dusty deadbeat, low down, whatever, she's a pick me. And conversely, if a black man says he wants a woman, he's a simp. He's a beta. He's a trad con or whatever. And you know what? I'm sorry. I have no room or no time for people like that who are that who are that negative who can't show me better outcomes. You can have an opinion. But unless your outcome unless you can show me better outcomes. So no. So no. Uh What are y'all talking about in here? White man sciences. So I want um uh, I don't know who you are, YK, and why you coming in here. Uh you don't you wanna you wanna come in here and type in caps in my in my um chat room since you worship the white man. I worship the white man. Yeah, I worship the white man. And what I just did is I showed you the power of the white man's block button. Don't come back to my channel. I don't know what the hell your problem is. Over, <clears throat> over here, 100% mindset man. Don't worry about white supremacy, gynocracy, the white man, or whatever. We're already out here being the best versions of black men we can be. We don't worry about the white man. We beat the white man. See, your problem is you can't beat him. Let me go ahead and unblock you, sucker. Let me go ahead and unblock you, YK. I tell you what, you go ahead and call in. Since you such a badass. Since you want to talk about the white man and gynocracy, here you go. Here you go, right here. Let me go ahead and fire this show back up. YK? No, no. You're not saying I worship the white man? First off, stop calling me kid. If I, miss, if I mischaracterized you, I unblocked you. Because let me spin this into something else. I apologize if I mischaracterize you. Black men. Black men. Um, just, just, just pretend with me for a second. Imagine a world where we took a powerful stance for ourselves. To where we accepted the world as it is. A world where Brother Jason Black and the Black Authority says, this isn't mine, I heard it from him. He said, um, racism is always going to exist. It's a human condition. You just need to make yourself powerful enough to where it can't hurt you. Okay? That's all I'm asking for us as men. Individually, make yourself powerful enough as an individual and as a group to where the things that exist out there can't hurt you. Look at what's going on with this whole country. Imagine if, imagine if the CV had come from the dark continent. It will be easier to discriminate against you and me, but became, because it came from the far east, 
oh no, we can't do that. We got to be nice to them. We have to, we, uh, because they have economic freaking power. And no, I'm not pro that. Nope, I'm not pro, but I do understand I'm a black man. See, there has to be a way for black men to speak to black men and not be under the banner of pro-black or whatever. Common sense makes common sense. Group economics makes group economics. I'm a part of this group. I can't, I cannot check out. I am. Send me your number. You know what? You can get on the next panel, dude. It's almost getting it's almost getting to be eleven thirty. But here's the thing. The people want to hear, well, I'll tell you, I do like solo TV eighty four. You wanna argue with me? You wanna debate me? You wanna you wanna argue with me or debate with me? Which one what which one is it? No, Pete, your principal. I got this. Which one is it? The people, the people link you up. Okay, here's what it is. Here's what you do. You email me, and you can pay my debate fee. You can email me and pay my debate fee. Mm-mm. I don't argue for free. Nope. You e- there it is right there. You email me, and we can set it up. You can email me. You can pay my debate fee, and I'll gladly put you on. You don't get any free pub on my channel. I just want to converse. Nope. There it is. There it is. The link has already been dropped. I'm a young black man in college. Oh, well, yeah, you damn sure got to pay to talk to me. Um, show some respect on the show. See, that's the problem. If you're young, anyway, I got to get up out of here. Shout out to uh, Sugar P. Shout out to the, to the, uh, shout out to my blue collar brothers. Shout out to the Blue Henrys. Shout out to the Blake Henrys. Uh, and I did read that correctly. Man, let me go ahead and time you out, man. Apparently, you're not getting it. I've said what I had to say, so you timed out. Shout out to the Blue Henrys. Shout out to the Blake Henrys. Right. Shout out to the Hit Squad. You brothers out there, you men out there getting it done. Do what you do, folks. Good show. B, keep your head up. Do what you need to do, Chica. Don't lose out on a good thing, people. Until the next time, tomorrow I'm going to do a uh, a show where I read off super chat questions and que- donation questions that I have missed. Uh, people who have come in and made donations and asked questions that I missed that over a certain dollar amount, I'm going to read them out. But it, cause sometimes you just can't get to them. Peace out, people. We are gone. Join me on IG for daily videos in the frat room. They disappear after I go live, so you catch them while you can. Join Patreon, support the movement. Shout out to all my patrons. Every Monday, 6.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Patreon only stream. So tell your good night.